What's up guys, Ronsko here, back with another video, and this time we've got ourselves the E-Elements or Mechanical Eagle Z88 True RGB Keyboard. But, this is the 81 key version. If you want to see the full layout Z88, check out my channel for that review. Inside the box, we've got the keyboard, a removable micro USB cable, and a small bag with a crappy keycap puller, switch puller, and extra swappable switches just like the Z77 and the full size Z88. And this is the keyboard, sporting an 81 key layout and comparing it to a 10 keyless, the width of it is 1 inch smaller making it even more compact. The only visible branding is just on the spacebar with the Mechanical Eagle logo, pretty clean and not obnoxious at all. On the back, we have the space to insert the micro USB cable with a nice feature of cable routing so you can route it to the left, right, or top of the keyboard to fit your setup. The wedges that keep the cable into place are very tight that they even leave marks on the cable itself. But the cable is pretty thick so you don't have to worry about any irreversible cable damage. We also have nice large friction pads on each corner and unlike the Z77 and the full layout Z88, this keyboard has harder rubber kickstand feet. Still better than Logitech and Razer keyboards, but just not as soft as the aforementioned keyboards. The side layout is as clean as it can get, with an exposed keycap layout. You can see the RGB LEDs and the dummy stabilizers on the shift key. And of course, you can see the metal plate underneath the switches, which provide rigidity to the keyboard to support the already thick plastic base. So this keyboard really does have good structure. As for the keycaps, they're pretty basic, made with ABS plastic with the expected textured but smooth feeling. And on the inside of it, you can see the cheap version of double injection keycap molding, but nonetheless, still technically double shot keycaps. As for the switches, they use Otemu switches with MX Blue properties and has a lighter feeling in comparison to switches like Gatoron. And here's the sound test of the Otemu switches. As for switch swapping, the switches were tightly put in so I couldn't pull them out, but this is how you switch the switches. Clamp the switch with the tool, carefully pull out, align the pins to the right holes, then carefully press down because you can break the pins off. As you can see, the keyboard doesn't have a lot of space, so instead of LED indicators, the caps lock, windows lock, and scroll lock all light up green when they are in use. Just like all China keyboards, lighting functions are done through the function key and arrow keys and the plus or minus key for this keyboard. First we have the rainbow wave, you can change the speed, freeze it at its slowest speed and change the direction with plus and minus. Next is the non backlit effect, which means nothing. Static is next, you have 5 brightness levels and 7 different color combinations. Next is breathing, you can control the speed and you also have 7 different color combinations. Here we have the first person profile, and it's not a custom profile. These keys are set in place and cannot be changed at all. Spectrum cycling is next, and you can change the speed of the color shifting. Next is reactive, you can change the speed and you have 7 color combinations and a random rainbow effect. Wave is next, and once again is the best effect to see how bright the LEDs can get. You can change the speed, have 6 color combinations and a multicolor profile. This is Marquee effect, you can change the speed and you have 7 color combinations and 1 random rainbow profile. Ripple effect is next with changeable speeds, 7 color options and a random rainbow profile as well. Lastly is Surround Ripple with 7 color combinations and a rainbow profile. Speed can't be changed on this particular effect. Overall, this keyboard is pretty decent. For $45, you're getting a pretty good build quality, true RGB backlighting, and mechanical switches despite how cheap they may be relative to bigger brands. Along with the removable micro USB cable, this can definitely be a travel keyboard, and the 81 key compactness of this keyboard just enhances that feature. If you're someone who travels a lot, 
or doesn't use the numpad or has minimal space, this is a great keyboard for you. Especially for a starter mechanical keyboard, this is a great choice. If you're interested in buying, check the links down below. And also thanks to Banggood for sending me this out for a review, it really is a good bang for your buck. So check out their website for other products. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, like and subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.